Let's get scratching. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, there we go. That's the sound we like. You got to do that little maneuver right there. Really kind of get, find your ass groove. That's what you got to do. You sit on the couch as much as I do. You form a mighty ass groove. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome back. More games. Yes, indeed, I got more games. Imagine that. How you doing? It's uh, Monday, as always, Monday Blues. Usually I'm chasing away the Monday Blues uh, with some good old beer, nice alcoholic beverages. Um, not the time for that right now, so uh, doing my coffee thing. That's sort of like my my liquid diet, I guess. It's, it's coffee or it's beer. I don't know how healthy that is, but... Um, you know, I try to pepper in like some water and tea in there whenever I can. But yeah, uh, once again, patented bubble bobble mug makes the coffee taste better for sure. All right, what do we got today? Well, as you can see by this lovely Comic Zone t-shirt uh, from Tokyo Video Gamers, I might add. My home away from home. Go check them out on whatever social media stuff, Twitter and everything, <laughs> whatever. Twitter and stuff. I'll, I'll put a link, I guess, if you really want to follow any of their stuff uh, on Twitter. There's some fun folks over there at Tokyo Video Gamers today. Baby, look what I got. I got us a nice big stack of Mega Drive games. Um, Mega Drive, I don't get too many... Uh, I like collecting Mega Drive games, mainly, I mean, obviously they're great games, and I just love the box art and cover art. If you're a collector, they look great on a shelf, obviously. Um, I don't get too many requests from people to pick up Mega Drive games for them though. Um, mostly because they're pretty expensive and I think a big part of that, one, they're not... Uh, Mega Drive games didn't exactly fly off the shelves in Japan back in the day. They lagged way behind the Super Famicom and the PC Engine. Uh, and, and also, you know, games are obviously more expensive when they're complete and Mega Drive games often are mainly thanks to these... Uh, Freaking clamshell cases, um, they, they'll definitely outlive those cardboard cases. They might freaking survive the nuclear apocalypse. It'll be Genesis cases and cockroaches. Um, but anyway, I got some uh, Mega Drive games recently, some really great games. Uh, so we're going to take a look at them now. You can let me know down in the comments what are some of your favorite Mega Drive or Genesis games. And what are some that are on your wish list, especially Japanese games. Anyway, let's get started. Right off the top, uh, a game I like a lot, again, when you're talking about just like really great box art and stuff, late 80s, early 90s anime stylings, we have Aero Flash. And Aero Flash, uh, you could argue not the best shooter on the Mega Drive, but certainly nowhere near the worst. It's just, it's solid. It's, um, there's nothing particularly great about it, I guess, but there's really nothing to complain about either. Um, and it does have the cool, you know, little gimmick of your spaceship can also turn into a mech suit. It's a transformer! Um, so you're basically, you're piloting a little Starscream kind of guy, I guess. Um, but depending on what uh, form you're in, if you're in your spaceship form or if you're in your robot form, um, your attacks will change because you can get little um, options to follow your ship around. And when you're in the spaceship form, they, they function kind of like... Um, I guess you could say they function kind of like Gradius, whereas if you're in your spaceship form, they're stationary. And it's more of like just one uh, stationary spread shot. Also, you have your arrow flash attack, which is your super attack. If you're in your spaceship form, it just sort of shoots like a big laser shot across the screen that does a lot of damage. But if you're in your robot form, you have sort of like this force field that forms around your robot and you can fly all over the screen and anything you come in contact with uh, takes damage and is uh, all the smaller enemies are destroyed pretty much immediately. Um, so that's cool. So there's that, that nice little gimmick to it. You can swap back and forth between spaceship and mech suit and aside from that, um, it is just a solid playing shoot 'em up It's got some nice graphics. It's got a decent soundtrack. And it does have those classic, like, late 80s, early 90s anime stylings to it. Um, you know, big boss battles to take on. 
Uh, not the most challenging shooter on the Mega Drive, not by a long shot. Actually, I have another game here we'll talk about in a little bit that is much more challenging. Um, but still, a uh, fun game, solid gameplay, uh, cool little gimmick, nice graphics, and nice sound design. I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it at the top of my list. Like stuff that, you know, I wouldn't put it in the same vein for me as stuff like Truxton, Gaiares, uh, Fire Shark, um, things like that. But still, you know, fantastic game. Can't go wrong with it. Uh, did get a North American release. So pick up whichever one you want, but if you ask me, the the, the, uh, the Japanese box art is uh, far superior, as is often the case. Uh, but there you go. Aeroflash, Mega Drive, amazing game. Pick that up whenever you can. Uh, next up, uh, something I was happy to add to the collection, this and its Super Famicom counterpart. Um, just recently, what, what got released? So there's the Turtles, there's the Cowbunga collection, and then there's, I think, Revenge of the Shredder? Well, here on the Mega Drive, uh, you might know it better as the Hyperstone Heist. In Japan, it is called TMNT Return of the Shredder. And uh, yeah, this is just the Japanese version of Hyperstone Heist. Um, there are no significant changes at all to it. Um, it's just a really solid beat-em-up. Um, there's some argument online, I guess, uh, still to this day, Sega fans, Nintendo fans, like what's better, Hyperstone Heist, or Turtles in Time. Um, if you ask me, it's it's like there's it's not even a debate. It's Turtles in Time. Turtles in Time is definitely the better game because it has like way more stages. I think um, a, a wider variety of stages, obviously, uh, more boss battles. I think better graphics, uh, better sound design. Um, it's just an all-around uh, better game. The one thing that Hyperstone has over it is the dash button. Um, if you're playing, you know, you, you get a nice dedicated dash button, which um, sort of like speeds up the gameplay, makes it a little smoother. Whereas Turtles in Time, you either have the auto dash or the double tap, which is not as satisfying. Everything else, though, about Turtles in Time is better, but uh, Hyperstone Heist does get that dash button. But uh, Hyperstone Heist, not as many stages, not as much variety in the stages, not nearly as many boss battles. Um, and for me, that really weakens it, you know. I, I want some Turtles in Time, usually. I want, my, I want my Neon Knight Riders. I want to throw foot soldiers at the screen. I want my Bury My Shell at Wounded Knee. I want all that stuff. Um, so that's all absent from uh, Return of the Shredder. Uh, but this game does have that, that one thing that is the, of the utmost importance, the most important thing, uh, the gameplay. The gameplay here is very solid. It is an incredibly fun um, beat-em-up that plays. It's just super smooth. Uh, you really, I don't know, there's not anything at all to say about uh, the gameplay that is bad. Um, this and uh, Turtles in Time, like the best beat-em-ups ever made. I have still yet to play, as of recording this video, I've yet to play Revenge of the Shredder. Um, I'm being told that that's like the best 2D beat-em-up ever. It's it's better than Turtles in Time and Hyperstone Highs, better than the arcade games. Um, that remains to be seen, but I will say that uh, for right now, I've played Turtles in Time and I've played Return of the Shredder slash Hyperstone Heist. Um, best controlling, most fun, best playing beat-em-ups ever made, in my opinion. So even though this is not as good as Turtles in Time, it's still an amazing game and essential for any Mega Drive collection, if you ask me. Uh, TMNT, Return of the Shredder. Beautiful stuff. Hyperstone Heist, if you prefer, if you're nasty. Uh, next up, um, you know, this, I just picked it up, pretty common place on the Mega Drive. Uh, one of my favorite games ever, um, regardless of what I'm playing it on. This is Street Fighter 2 Dash Plus. Um, what the hell? What's with the, the dash and the plus? It's just the Japanese version, the title for uh, Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition. Which, um, when you're playing on the Mega Drive or the Genesis and you're playing with a six button controller, uh, this game just plays like a dream. It, it's better than the SNES version. You can argue over differences in graphics and sound, uh, what you prefer, but with that six button, uh, Genesis controller, uh, the gameplay is better. Um, gameplay on those those controllers, uh, those are my favorite 2D fighters uh, ever. 
are the ones that I've played on Sega consoles. I mean, they're great in the arcades too, obviously. That's always like maybe the you know, best way to play. Um, but for console gamers, you, you want to play on those, those Sega consoles because whether it's the Mega Drive or the Saturn, the controllers were just like perfect for it. That six button layout is beautiful. And you know, when you're playing Street Fighter 2 on the Super Nintendo, it's not as intuitive using those shoulder buttons for uh, the heavy attacks. It's um, much easier, much more accessible with uh, the Sega controllers. Obviously, if you're playing with a three button Sega controller, F that, the Super Nintendo is better. If you're playing with a six button Sega controller, there's no comparison, um, which is, yeah, that's so interesting. What a difference a controller makes, right? Um, you're playing with the uh, Model 1 uh, Genesis controller, way worse than the Super Nintendo. Playing with the Model 2, way better. Um, it's just uh, the, the button layout changes everything. And obviously, you know, they're both better than playing with a two button <laughs> uh, PC Engine controller. Um, you need those six buttons, people. Um, but, you know, again, just the button layout of the Mega Drive is better than the button layout of the Super Nintendo, making this a better version of the game. Uh, in any other instance, it's, it's Street Fighter 2. You know what you're getting. Um, again, the graphical differences exist, although this still looks very good. And sound is different as well. The, you know, Mega Drive sound chip, very different sounds produced than the uh, Super Famicom sound chip. Um, so, but you still get those great arrangements. It's still a great soundtrack. Um, I do prefer uh, the, the sound from the SNES or Super Famicom, but still I cannot complain about this. And maybe like one or two of the tracks here actually do sound uh, better coming out of the Mega Drive sound chip. Um, but yeah, uh, I don't know. This is just like a game that I can like talk about forever. It's like the namesake of my channel, right? big Street Fighter fan. So Street Fighter 2 uh, Dash Plus. Uh, it's uh, one of the less expensive games you can pick up on the Mega Drive these days uh, just because even for a console that didn't sell so great in Japan, if you had a Mega Drive, presumably, you were gonna get Street Fighter 2. So there's no shortage of copies floating around out there. Um, it's great, it's a classic, and it's another essential for any Mega Drive or Genesis collection. Street Fighter 2 Dash Plus. Uh, AKA Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition. Uh, one of the best uh, games ever made. Um, and with that, uh, I'm gonna take a little bit of coffee break. We're gonna talk about some more games. So uh, again, I don't know what I do here at, while I'm filming it. When I'm editing, I'll just do something. But uh, let's see whatever the hell Future Jim decided to put in this edit. Yeah, see you soon. See you soon. We're not going anywhere. See you in a a bit. I don't know what to say at this point. Just, I'm drinking. Go. Street Fighter 2 all right okay welcome back what the hell did i put there i don't know you tell me um all right got a few more great mega drive games uh this one um really great game uh just released a few years ago actually in 2019 um so uh one of the um sort of uh you know, lots of games uh, from sort of indie developers and stuff got published on like, you know, Mega Drive, Genesis, Dreamcast, stuff like that. Uh, this is one of those uh, published by Columbus Circle, published a lot of games like this. Um, this is a really good one. It's called Ultra Core. And Ultra Core, um, this is a game that obviously has a lot of influences. Like when I'm playing it, like visually, I'm sometimes reminded of like Cybernator. Other times I feel like a little more of a, a I don't know, maybe like a Black Thorn vibe. Um, Gameplay wise, uh, the just the movement and the shooting and everything makes me think of, um, I think like Terminator on the Sega CD. And then some of the exploration and things is almost a little Metroid-like. Um, 
So lots of influences in this game. Essentially, it is a run and gun, but you do have like a lot of exploring to do. Um, so each stage is yeah, has a big map, and you can find little terminals to access the map and see how to get to the end. Um, and you can collect uh, all kinds of power-ups. Basically, you have one gun, but that, that gun can swap between a bunch of different fire modes. And then you can find these power-ups when you, when you pick them up, whatever it is you have selected at the time, uh, will get a nice little power boost. So you have like a spread shot, you have like a standard machine gun shot, you can uh, upgrade other things like lasers and homing shots and stuff like that. So your one gun has a whole lot of different weapons installed in it. And uh, aside from that, uh, I believe you do get some like bombs and things like that to help you out. And you have a health meter. All your info is like down at the bottom of the screen. So you got like ammo and you've got um, your like power, uh, money because you can, you collect all these coins and things and you can use them at terminals for, for various things. Um, so for, for the most part, I would say, uh, yeah, uh, sort of a straightforward action run and gun. You run around, you blow up a bunch of robots and things like that. You get to the end of the stage, there's like a big boss battle. You destroy your boss, you go on to the exit, and then you like you move on to your next stage. Not terribly complicated stuff, but again, each stage is kind of like a little maze, and there are lots of hidden areas. So you can shoot away like parts of the ground or shoot out bits of the wall, go find a little hidden area with like coins to collect, or some sort of like power-ups or something like that to find. Um, so there's some exploring to be done, so it's not just like a mindless run and gun, it's not just like a Contra clone or something like that. It is a, um, I don't know, how would you like describe like gameplay like that? Like an action, run and gun, platformer, exploration type of game. Again, it's just a game with a lot of influences, um, but it's very fun. Um, can be fairly challenging, but uh, especially in the later stages, um, it get a little confusing where to go. And then I was having like a lot of trouble because you can jump and then you can kind of do a high jump, but I was, you know, for a little while I was having like a tricky time doing it. Kept dying on this one spot over and over again. Was getting frustrated. Eventually got past it though, because the some of the platforms are kind of springy. And so you have to like jump with the springiness of the platform. Um, that aside though, really fun game. Uh, and really nice visuals as well. And a, a pretty great soundtrack too. Um, so who, who developed this? It just says 2019 Soft Distribution and Columbus Circle. Um, so, uh, whichever the case may be, I think this is also available on like a bunch of other platforms. Like you probably pick it up digitally. Maybe it's available on PS4. They probably did the same thing that, with this that they did with uh, Xenocrisis. They just released it for a bunch of different uh, consoles. There's probably a Dreamcast version as well, if I'm not mistaken, which I've never played. I'd actually be interested to play other versions of this game. But as it is, the Mega Drive version is awesome. I like it a lot. Uh, if you have a Mega Drive or a Genesis, uh, I'd recommend picking this one up. Ultra Core, a lot of fun. Again, again with a lot of influences, but it, it does them all justice. Uh, next up, another shoot 'em up. This is uh, one of the best, maybe the best on the console, depending on who you talk to. Um, and this did, I think, recently get a re-release. So you can, I think you can play this on like the PS4 or whatnot. Um, but this is Gaiares, and uh, again, the uh, far superior Mega Drive box art. Um, Gaiares, the one that that guy really liked, the guy doing the number one with his hand or whatever. He's like, yeah, I'm a professional gamer in like 1990, and I love Gaiares. How how can someone be a pro gamer in 1990? Like, what were they doing? <laughs> were they going to just like? Guy Arez competitions? What the hell was going on back then? And why was it a guy with a mullet and a pencil thin stash? That doesn't seem right. Anyway, uh, Guy Arez Renovation, which I wonder, has this also been released on one of those, um, what is it, the Evercade? They have those renovation collections. Has this been released on the Evercade? I don't know. Um, this game is awesome though. Side scrolling, shoot 'em up, and uh, a solid playing one at that. And kind of the gimmick here is you have, um, I guess sort of like a little drone that you can send out and it'll attach to enemies and then you can steal like a power from the enemy. So you change what your shot is, like it could be a laser shot, a spread shot, whatever. Um, you get it by absorbing the power from your enemies and the more times you do it, uh, you can power up your shot. So do it like three or four times and you've got a maxed out shot. 
Uh, so that's really cool. So that's kind of the gimmick of the gameplay. There are a bunch of different weapons in the game, but you can only get them by stealing them from uh, enemy ships, and then you do it over and over again, and you're powered up, and you're kicking ass, and this game is very difficult. At least it is for me. This is one of those uh, shooters that I find to be um, really tough. Like I said, Arrow Flash is a pretty easy playthrough. Like Thunder Force 3 and Thunder Force 4, those aren't too difficult. I've been able to get through Fire Shark on like a 1cc, um, like a, a no death run on that. So I've been able to get pretty good at a bunch of the shoot 'em ups on the Mega Drive. Gaiara still gives me trouble though. Um, you know, I've gotten a lot better at it as I've played it a lot more. Um, you know, uh, copies kind of come and go, but it's one that, uh, this one, uh, I picked up recently, but I, I have a, another copy that I've had for like, I don't know, 10 years. So I've had a good 10 years to try to get good at this game. Um, but this is another one that's kind of expensive. It's over a hundred dollars, maybe in the, the neighborhood of like 150 these days. So it's a pretty expensive game. That's why it's good that it's available now on other platforms. Um, if you don't want to, you know, if you're not a collector. That's the thing. These games like this, they're expensive. Those are collector's prices. Um, this is a great game, but it's also, it's like, uh, I don't know. It's just one of those, um, again, like great cover art and all that stuff. It's something that like, if you're a collector, if you're just someone who likes to have games that sit on the shelf, you know, this is <laughs> a pretty one to have. You can like display it or whatever. Again, I've had my copy for like 10 years. I think when I bought mine, it was like 50 bucks. Um, but yeah, just a fantastic game. Great gameplay, beautiful graphics, um, really good sound design as well, kind of like the total package. Again, one of the best uh, Mega Drive and Genesis shooters. This is uh, some people's favorite uh, Mega Drive shooter, and it's understandable why. I don't know that, that it's my favorite, but it's definitely, I would probably put it in like my top, like my top five for sure. Um, it's a great game, and if you haven't played it already, and, uh, it, you know, if you don't want to, like, spend all the money to pick up a Mega Drive version or a Genesis version, uh, go pick it up on whatever it's available on now. If, if it's digitally or if you pick up, like, a physical copy on, like, PS4 or something, whatever. If you're a shoot 'em up fan, it is worth it. Gaiares, uh, again, one of the best Mega Drive shooters. Uh, high in the running for some people's best 16-bit shooters, so that'll tell you something. And uh, the last game, another one that's a bit of a collector's piece. Um, but just, uh, something that I like a lot and, uh, something that I know someone out there is going to have fun with. Um, again, this is one where like I've, as soon as I knew it existed, as soon as like I set foot in Japan, I was like, yoink, I'll have that. Um, but another one that's kind of in high demand, despite the fact that it's so expensive. Uh, this is Rockman Mega World. What is Rockman Mega World? I hear someone asking, I guess I'm just hearing voices. Um, Rockman Mega World, for those of you who might not know, uh, this is an updated 16-bit collection of the first three games in the Rockman series. So Mega Man, Mega Man 2, and Mega Man 3 updated and put on the Mega Drive. So how cool is that? Um, so there's not really much else to say if you've played any of the original Mega Man games on the NES or Rockman on the Famicom, you know that they're awesome classic games. Some of the best uh, platformers ever made, basically. Um, and here they're updated with, uh, you know, 16-bit graphics. So you get uh, nice graphics, kind of similar, maybe similar to like Mega Man 7, but not exactly. And then you get those, uh, like, you know, the soundtracks to the first few Mega Man games are excellent. And then again, you got you get to hear them uh, retooled and uh, changed a bit for the Mega Drive sound chip, and they sound really good. Um, not all music sounds great coming out of the Mega Drive. It, I think it took um, the, the Mega Drive sound chip had so much like potential, and um, it took especially talented sound designers to get uh, really good music and sound effects out of the Mega Drive. They definitely had some people like that at Capcom. Um, so the music here, updated soundtracks, they sound great. The graphics look great. The gameplay is still awesome. And you get all six, uh, I say six, sorry, all three uh, in a single cartridge. And that's a lot of fun. And then I believe if you finish uh, all three of them, you unlock some sort of additional like bonus thing or whatever. So that's cool too. 
Um, but if you're a Mega Man fan or a Rock Band fan, um, this is just one of those games where like it's a must own. I believe this did get some sort of English conversion or release like sometime recently. Um, I'm not 100% sure. You can tell me in the comments. Yeah, that's right. You watch my videos and you do work. You tell me what the stuff is because I'm the expert supposedly. Um, so if you can play this any other way, like digitally or pick it up somewhere in English, um, do that because as awesome as this game is, the original Mega Drive copy. Uh, it's an expensive game. Um, it's not a terribly common game, and it's also in high demand. Anything Capcom, uh, anything Rockman is always going to be in high demand. Uh, so it's a pretty expensive game. Again, it's a collector's piece. Um, so if you can find some other cheaper alternative way to play this, uh, definitely do. Um, for me, owning a, a physical copy, uh, again, with this just like awesome box art, and I can popping in you know I'm one of those people like I'm a gamer I'm a collector I like to play on original hardware and stuff um, but uh, can admit that that's not always financially feasible these are luxury items folks so if you can play it a cheaper way definitely do um, but uh, love it um, I'm gonna send this off pretty soon but I'll never get rid of my copy um, but yeah Rockman Mega World so cool can't say enough good things about that oh there you go that is, ladies and gentlemen, and others, uh, half a dozen uh, Sega Mega Drive games. Some really good stuff in there. Some shoot 'em ups, some platformers. Um, just uh, stuff to have a lot of fun with. Um, so, again, down in the comments, let me know what do you think of these games? Have you played any of them? Have you played all of them? Uh, what are some of your favorite Mega Drive games? What's on your wish list? Specifically, uh, what are some Japan exclusive, maybe, Mega Drive games? Uh, that are on your wish list i'd like to know uh, because sometimes i feel like i've been here long enough and i've been collecting games and playing games here one of the uh, comments i get um, when i do like my game hunts and things is like oh wow you know i'm so envious that you get to just get on the train and just go somewhere and you just have access to all this stuff so um, i feel like i've just i've had this stuff for so long i've had access to all this stuff for so long sometimes maybe i take it a little for granted um, so yeah uh, Japan exclusive stuff it doesn't have quite the the magic the allure for me as it did like when I first got here like in 2010 and I was like oh my god I want to find all this cool stuff I never got to play back in the day and here we are like 12 years later and I'm like yeah you know some stuff whatever um, so yeah let me know your favorite uh, or some wish list stuff Japanese Mega Drive games I'd like to know anyway I feel like I've rambled on long enough I'm one of those I'm a rambling type uh, so you got to shut me up. Uh, so thanks, everybody, for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you on the next edition of More Games. Take care. Goodbye. Let's get scratching.